Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. Blah, 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 blah. Do I sound bitter? Because I am. I'm your host, Darkness the Curse. And before I begin, I would love to thank my generous patrons, my British Rail Critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why I remain miserable. See, I made a tactical error. I had an entirely different list planned for this week, but I decided to ask my wonderful Discord server what they would actually prefer that I do. And basically all of them said another worst trains ever list. Why do you hate me? Is my serious, serious question. Five of the worst trains ever. Part 23. When will my suffering end? Talalin Railways number five, the lawnmower, or sometimes called Rolt's Folly. Now, hold a moment. Talalin? You mean the, the first heritage railway in the UK and in fact in, in the world? And yeah, that's a narrow gauge railway. Now we've talked about plenty of times before, but their number five isn't called the lawnmower. Their number five is a diesel called Midlander. Well, yes, now it is, but the original number five was called the lawnmower, or again, Rolls Folly. It was actually delivered to them in October of 1952, but it was powered by a Model T Ford engine. So it actually ran on gasoline, not diesel fuel. That's fine, I mean, it was small. It could run on a small motor, no big deal. Except for the small problem that, um, <clears throat> that motor was third hand, not even second hand. It was third hand. I mean, it was from a Model T, so you know it was old. It was actually taken from Tom Rolt's narrow boat, Cressy. It was withdrawn just the next year because the engine seized up on a market day train. Given its age, I'm surprised it lasted that long. It was put to the side, and eventually its frame was converted into just a flat wagon. The flat wagon actually still exists at Talalin, so technically this locomotive is in preservation just in its altered form. And it's actually in the process of being restored back to a locomotive. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, it failed miserably, but I mean, I guess it is also a part of the railroad's history. And in its defense, it was kind of slapped together, and its only downside was that it was using a really old engine. But Talalin was definitely financially strapped in those days. Spending the extra money was just wasn't in the cards for them. It's considered one of their pioneering locomotives, and I guess it is nice they're trying to give it another chance. So maybe someday this little gasoline devil might actually be running on the rails again. The New South Wales C-34 class. Aha, Australia. These steam locomotives were built by the Everleigh Railway Workshops or the New South Wales Government Railways. They were constructed between 1909 and 1910 and only five were built. They were 10 wheelers, four six zeros, and they were an attempt to produce a larger, more powerful and faster version of the P-6 class, also known as C-32s. They were not successful at this at all. It was found that they just weren't really any better and arguably worse. They rode really rough, like really, really rough, making them unsuitable for many, many lines. They shuffled them around a few times and actually still used them for a pretty decent amount of time. They weren't retired until the 1950s. So, I mean, they're not the worst things in the world purely based off that alone, but they could only work in very specific locations. And when they dieselized out there, they were one of the first things to go. There was actually an attempt to preserve them. 3402 lasted until 1962 in storage, but unfortunately the preservation attempts failed and all five of these somewhat unsuccessful, but still well-loved locomotives were scrapped. The DSB class MY, 1201 and 1202. Okay, now we're actually getting to the legitimately bad stuff. The last couple, you could kind of argue they still had their good points and, you know, financial restraints and things like that. But here's where we're starting to get genuinely terrible. So I have already taken my antidepressants before I even begin this conversation. These two diesel locomotives were built by Fricks, 
in Eris, Denmark, which I'm probably pronouncing terribly, but you know what I mean, I hope. In 1957 and 1960, the locomotives used a diesel engine that was produced by Burmeister and Wayne, and another company, Thrage Titan, delivered the electrical equipment. Due to the somewhat curved and fancy appearance, as they were very nice looking diesels, the first one was actually named Marilyn Monroe. Yes, really. And the second one was named My Fair Lady. But beauty is only skin deep, and deep inside they were awful. Just disgusting diesels, like some of the worst that the Danish railways have ever had to utilize. Period, end of story, they were awful. They were unstable on the rails to begin with, they didn't ride well which is unusual for a diesel and generally a very bad sign, but even if that could be overlooked, they were completely unreliable. They were frequent errors, and they both spent more time being serviced in the shops than actually, you know, running? Which is literally the opposite of what you want. Um, that's, uh, that's atrocious. And they were. They were an incredible disappointment. The design was not repeated for them. They lasted in operation until 1969, when they were officially retired, and both were scrapped in 1971. The R46, New York City subway cars. Oh, New York City subway? We've talked about them before. The R46 is an EMU that utilized a third rail to run on the New York City subway. These specific cars were meant to work on the B division of the subway, and they replaced all the remaining old-style R16s and some R10s that were still being used at the time. The R46s were built between 1975 and 1978. A total of 754 of these were built, and they are still in service, but uh, that's only because they were refurbished later, between 1990 and 1992. Why is that? Well, frankly, they were absolute garbage. They were completely awful. The Pullman Standard Rail Company did an awful job with these, and I'm being real with you on that, they were trash. For one thing, the deliveries were delayed due to a strike that occurred at Pullman. That's not entirely their fault, I would imagine. I'm sure that was a complicated situation. But during their first few years of service, several hundred cracks were found in the trucks of the R46s. Not just one or two cracks, no, hundreds of cracks. That's legitimately horrifying. And because of this, they were actually referred to as the most troubled cars ever purchased, which is a bold statement. As someone who spent a great deal of his time talking about terrible locomotives, as well as full on train sets, I don't know how much I completely agree with them being the absolute worst ever, but they were pretty bad. They had to actually minimize their use because of how bad the cracks were getting. Hundreds moved into thousands of cracks, and they had to be replaced with R44 type standard trucks in order to make them workable. Oh yeah, by the way, that was of course not their only issue. In July 1979, Pullman Standard told the MTA that the handbrake assemblies for the R46 were actually problematic, which is also alarming. Oh yeah, that same month, inspections revealed that the steel where the car body was joined to the truck was wearing away. Which is... what? Was everything on these falling apart? They weren't that old by this point, they were only a few years old, what the heck? It wasn't until, like I said, between 1990 and 1992, that a full rebuild of these cars was carried out by Morrison and Knudsen of Hornell, New York. That seems to have fixed most of the issues. They're still running now, like I said, in rebuilt form. So this is one case of a really, really, really bad train that was actually corrected. So rest assured that as of now, running on the rails, they probably aren't currently disintegrating. But they were. The James Tolman locomotive. This is an old one, uh, and it's a duplex. No. Well, yes, actually. It, it's the same concept. I know it doesn't look like it, but it is. It's just like the S1 or the T1 on the Pennsylvania Railroad. 
just, you know, doesn't necessarily look immediately like a duplex on the surface. But I promise you, it is. And it was very bad. This was a simple locomotive, a non-compound, but had four cylinders. Two of the cylinders sat outside the frames, and those drove the rear set of driving wheels, while the two cylinders under the smoke box, the inside ones, drove the front driving wheels. This seems like a really weird way to do a duplex, because that basically means it would be a 4-1-1-0. Why? There was no mechanical connection between the two separate drives, and this was not the first time a duplex had been attempted. This was in 1892, and an earlier one happened in 1882. That was the Teutonic class. They were the largest of several compound engine types built by Francis Webb. They were really bad. They were notorious for wheel slip and jerky starting. And the James Tolman did nothing to fix any of these problems. For one thing, it had a very unusual boiler that was composed of two joined near circular sections. Quite why this was done this way is unclear, as there was no inherent benefit to doing it, but uh, they did. Also, no one seems to know why it was even named James Tolman. That was not the name of the designer. The locomotive was designed and financed by Mr. Winby of London and built by Hawthorne, Leslie, and Company of Newcastle, England. So James Tolman is uh, an unknown individual. Maybe they just came up with the name randomly. No one seems to know, but either way, he probably wouldn't want to be associated with this anyway. It was unsatisfactory in tests due to a lack of steaming power, and it was really prone to failures, just in general. It was unreliable. It also had really bad wheel slip, which is a very, very, very duplex thing to have. Even the later T1 and the S1 were known for having that issue, though by that point, had the steam age lasted longer, the Pennsylvania Railroad may have actually been able to work out how to correct that issue. But in those days, the late 1800s, no one had any idea how to fix this problem, and it failed on a near constant basis. Mr. Winsby actually became disillusioned with the entire project, and eventually just abandoned the whole thing. There's no word on exactly what happened to the locomotive, but, um, okay, look, it was scrapped. It's not around anymore, it's gone. I don't know when it was gone, I don't know how long it lasted, but the last time that I know it existed was in 1893, so it probably didn't live that much longer after that. It was, it was bad. It was a bad locomotive. That's what you're here for, isn't it? This is what you wanted! Are you not entertained?! And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders. Some do 267, Orange Glass, Royal Hudson 2860, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitson 131-232, Mr. Black Rose, Josh Johnson, Middle for Life Guy, and Zeg A1, Arthur Roy, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Joshua Long, Brian, Jack Carson's Rare Videos, Hayden DeGrow, Master of None, Dr. Racer 78, Ohio Trucker 1, Lord Hoth 444, Alaric Jaspers, The Baxter, that guy with a beard, Mark Holding, Mercenary Revy, Lock Kraken, Crystal Morgan, A Person 723, and DM Tribal Typhoon. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.